embroidery friends. How are you today? I'm Eileen Roach, founder of Designs and Machine Embroidery, and I'm thrilled to be here today and very happy that you're joining in. Today is the June Small Town Charm Reveal, and I'm super excited to share that with you at the end of today's broadcast. And of course, you're gonna find it in the five by seven and the seven by 12. It's a little different this time. It doesn't have an awning. So stay tuned and you'll see what's coming up. But before we do that, I have a special guest that's going to be joining me and we're going to talk all about patches. Now, really patches like the professionals make them on any embroidery machine. So let's welcome in embroidery extraordinaire wizard, Deborah Jones. Hello, Deborah. Hi, Eileen. Great to be here. Oh, it's just great to have you here. You know, Deborah, you have a vast um, breadth of knowledge in the embroidery industry that really stems from commercial all the way to, you know, the home industry that we're sitting in right now, pretty much, right? Well, that's true. And, and really, it was a result of my dad's passion for embroidery. So Aww. I'm really happy that he instilled a love of embroidery in me from a really young age. I grew up with it and uh, never had any desire to get away from it. Oh, that's awesome. You know, and you remember when he was mesmerized at a state fair when he saw the first embroidery machine stitching, I think it was a small deer, is that right? That's right, yeah. Stood there and watched it all day long and then made a deposit on the machine. So, you know, he loved it at first sight. And uh, so it's, it's common for a lot of us, I think, who walked into a sewing store and yeah. saw that embroidery machine stitching and walked out uh, with that machine. Yeah, but you know, he did embroidery free motion for many years, right? Because he, he was did. a Western yes. tailor. You're, you're absolutely right, because he was a Western that. wear tailor and he uh, decorated the costumes for rodeo performers and musicians. Okay, so I'm going to embarrass myself here, but I remember a couple of years ago on PBS was a special, a four part series, I think, by Ken Burns on. Um, country music and we saw right some of right. your dad's garments in there that's right and and it's so wonderful to have uh one of his uh uh creations featured in the 100 years of western wear uh how the west was worn so he's got a legacy that will continue on and i hope to uh hope to uh be uh worthy of that as well and oh, I think, his legacy, you know. Yeah, well, I definitely think you are, for sure, for sure. Let's see. Um, so we have lots of people watching today. They're, you know, joining us from Naples and Canada, Tampa Bay, California, Ohio, Michigan. It's awesome to have all these fine embroiderers here with us today, huh? It oh. absolutely is. And, and, you know, a lot of uh, people who are joining us uh, have been doing this a long time too. And people right. uh, never seem to quench that desire to learn how to do something new. That's true. But you know, the newbies, I, they can jump in at any time, right? There's nothing. Well, absolutely. You know, there's there, and especially with what we're going to talk about today, this yeah. is a great place for anyone to start because you literally, uh, you know, can't mess it up. It's really easy. That's right. You know, you don't even have to worry about placement, which is often the biggest struggle that, you know, new embroiderers and some of us seasoned ones have. So um, we're going to talk all about patches. And because they're a freestanding item, you know, you don't have to worry about placement. You can sew it on in the location that you want, right? Or you can iron it on. Oh, yeah. Duh. <laughs> even easier. Okay, so you ready to share some of your knowledge? I'd be I'd be happy to. Let's bring it up. Okay. So uh, I want to share what I've uh, learned about how to make patches on our embroidery machines. And you know, it's not just um, professionals that can make patches. Today, anyone who has an embroidery machine can make a high quality professional embroidered patch. So I'd love to know what patches you'd like to make 
and I'd love to know what you would attach them to. So you might put in the comments what you would like to make patches for and what you would like to attach them to. We'd love to see. So well, Deborah, I'm just going to stop you really quick because Dee Clark says she got her first machine to embroider onesies for her nephew and he's now graduating <laughs> from Stanford next month. I love that. Oh my goodness. I you know. Must be, you must be well seasoned and so proud. So thank yeah. you for sharing that. Thank and so imagine that. the different things she's embroidered through the years, right? Well, for that, him. and look at the yeah. changes that she has seen yeah. in the technology, Eileen. It's just amazing. Yeah. And so Catherine uh, Kurtzshaw, she wants to do um, patches, her son's logo for patches and hats. And isn't that so true? The minute you get an embroidery machine, uh, some family member says, can you make me a patch with my business name on it or so forth, right? That, absolutely. And, you know, I like to put patches on things that I might not be able to get into my machine, you know, a book bag, a shoe, yeah. uh, you know, uh, uh, it, there's so many things that it's easy to apply a patch to that might not be so easy to embroider directly. Absolutely. It's a great solution. And our good friend Joanne Banco is in the, in the house, I guess we should say, watching. So good to see her here. Thank you for yeah, joining us, Joanne. Great. Yeah, great to see everyone. It's it's really a, a, a great meeting place here you have on your Facebook Live, Eileen. So oh, it's so fun. Absolutely. A real community, for sure. So, um, yeah, so keep telling us where you would like to put your patches and maybe even the subject manner of what, what they are. So, oh, look, uh, Barbara Jones is thinking about sugar skulls. So I've got one to show you, Barbara. Yeah. In fact, I think it's coming up right here in this next slide. There's there my sugar go. skull. And um, that is a, a, a patch that was, that was actually cut with scissors. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, you know, that's one of my favorite methods. So we're going to look at uh, the different methods to make these. But these patches that you're seeing here were all made with poly patch twill, which is the game changer for being able to make patches on your embroidery machine and have them stand up to washing and wearing, never separating, never wrinkling. So that is... Uh, a new product and it comes in three different uh, color assortments brights which is mm -hmm. kind of your fashion colors athletic which of course are your athletic colors I'll show you in a moment and a uniform uh, collection of, of colors so it this is a pre-backed uh, polyester twill so it will launder well and it will stand up to a lot of conditions so here are the uniform colors, which, as you might expect, includes uh, white, red, brown, or tan, khaki, uh, those kind of colors. The athletic colors, royal blue, purple, gold, red, uh, kelly green. And um, the brights, which, of course, are so appealing. I tell you, I, I may not know exactly what I'm going to use all these colors for, but I had to have them all <laughs> because they're all so beautiful, just as you see there on the screen. So here is some of the, or here are some of the patches I made using the scissors method. And, you know, this is an easy way to cut out your patches, anybody can do it. You don't have to have any special equipment to make these patches. So here's how you do it. There's um, the simple method of just hooping the twill. You can just put it right in an embroidery hoop. And honestly, the magnetic hoops work a little better than a traditional hoop. And the reason is that when you have to hoop it in that two ring hoop, uh, traditional hoop, um, it can crease the fabric a little bit. So if you want to make the most of your fabric, um, you know, the magnetic hoop is a little bit of an advantage. And if, and I recommend that you try to plan multiple patches in the same hooping to conserve on your um, patch material, so your poly patch. 
So one way you can do that is to leave the excess hooped. If you're going to be making multiple patches, just don't cut it off at the end of the hoop. Leave it uh, extending from the hoop edge and just slide the fabric to the next uh, position, which of course is very easy to do with your magnetic hoop. And then um, you, uh, as a plus, you can hoop in any direction. This material is nine inches wide. And so you can hoop it vertically or horizontally, whichever fits your hoop size best. It's 24 inches long, uh, by the way. So in this instance, I laid out my patches to conserve uh, my twill. Yeah, I could have probably gotten them even a little closer, but I stitched both of these patches in a four inch hoop. And if you need to turn the direction to make them fit even closer. But, you know, on this piece of twill, I could still get another patch, um, even using the pre-cut method at the bottom of this sheet. And Eileen is going to show you a tip on how to accomplish that using our print and stick target paper in just a few minutes. But here is that finished patch. I cut it out with my scissors. Now I like to use a relatively short blade but sturdy uh, scissor, not a thread scissor, but a uh, embroidery scissor. Um, when I say not a thread scissor, I mean not one with real fine light blades. I like a uh, three to six inch straight blade embroidery scissor and just be careful not to nick the stitching as you're trimming around it. But practice makes perfect. And as you can see, uh, none of the stitches on this border were cut, but it's cut nice and closely. And um, it looks very, um, you know, very presentable. I have no issues with this scissors method at all. And frankly, um, depending on your circumstance, it may be the method that you choose. But there is another method, and that's the pre-cut method. And these are all examples of patches that I made using the pre-cut method. And, you know, I included this Best Dad in the Galaxy uh, patch kind of here as a um, uh, Father's Day remembrance. And I realized after I finished it, I could have put a two and a one in those ribbons hanging from the end of the rosette there. So just another thought, you could make a patch for each and every Father's Day or Mother's Day, just a, or birthday or any occasion. So I love this whole patch collecting aspect as well. So in the pre-cut method, we're going to cut out the patch shape using the placement line. And when you hear me say placement line, what does that make you think of? I'm thinking of applique designs. So really, most applique designs might be suitable for making a patch. So just think about those applique designs you might have in your collection. So to pre-cut using method one, you would hoop the twill and stitch that placement line that's right in the file and then cut right along that placement line. That's gonna be very accurate because it's gonna match up to that placement line when you stitch it onto your twill, I mean, onto your uh, salvi when you see me demonstrate that in a moment. And the second method would be to use print and stitch uh, target paper, which we're gonna learn about in a moment, or cut it on your digital cutter, which, if you've got a digital cutter, hey, this is uh, a breeze. So the, uh, the next uh, uh, step is to hoop a piece of heavy water soluble. You want that water soluble to, soluble to be super heavy and to hoop it very tightly. Stitch a placement line uh, on the heavy duty water soluble, the same line that you use to pre-cut your shape, whether you hand cut it, whether you digitally cut it, whatever method you use, you're going to match that patch up to that placement line. So spray the back of the patch with a temporary spray adhesive, whatever your favorite is, uh, 
and then match that up and finger press it onto that heavy water soluble. That is uh, going to line up perfectly. Then stitch your tack down stitch just, and you recognize these steps, you guys, from appliques. So it's kind of the same as making an applique, but we're doing it on this heavy duty water soluble. Then we're going to just complete the design and uh, it's going to finish off with a satin stitched border. So it's just a regular satin stitch. But the cool thing about this method is that it leaves a completely clean finished border. And you just punch it out of that heavy duty water soluble uh, like a paper doll and just trim up any loose threads and you've got a great looking patch. I think that this is a fantastic method. If you want to take the time to pre-cut, yep, I think it's a winner. Either method, though, gives great looking patches. And we also uh, might want to match the border of the patch, in some cases, to the actual twill. So to make that easier, there are companion thread sets that let you match the border of your poly patch to the actual twill. So there's three sets of threads that will be a companion to the poly patch. So the last thing you might want to do to your patch is to make it an iron-on patch. Like I mentioned, you know, I might like to attach a patch to some luggage or a shoe, just anything you can think of. So you're going to need a, a patch attach, uh, heat, uh, adhesive film. You're going to need an iron. I just used my little craft iron and a nonstick sheet. So here's the steps. You're going to turn the patch upside down on your nonstick sheet, cut a piece of patch attach a little larger than the patch and cover it up with the shiny paper side facing up. It's real easy to tell <laughs> the clear film side of the patch attach. And then iron the patch attach onto the patch. It just takes a few passes with a hot iron over it. You can tell when it's melted really easily to tell. And then let that completely cool. I can't stress enough, don't get so eager to take it off that you want to do it before it's cool because then it's too elastic and uh, you might tear some off of the actual patch where you want it to stay. But if you let it cool completely, then it just tears away cleanly from the edges of your patch. And you can see in the first picture, I've torn away half of it. And in the last picture, I've torn away the rest of it. And it's sitting there in a little ball to the side of my patch. So that is how you make patches with patch, poly patch uh, twill, Eileen. I love it. I love it. It's so simple, right? You have everything lined out. That professional grade poly twill is really what makes the difference. It is, and you know, because I know you've gotten many questions over the years, as I have, about what to use to make a, a patch. And no matter what you fuse to the back, there's always that risk of it coming separated or wrinkling. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you just, you just really want to have that... Um, that professional grade and that's what poly patch does for that's us. right absolutely it's awesome and then the iron on steps are so easy and we know that it's going to um you know stay adhered to the garment or bag whatever it is boy we've had lots of different uh comments like joanne Banco oh. told us that she made 50 different patches for a group of children to place on their capes so that they were all superheroes and it really oh. made them feel like superheroes. Well, yeah. and a good point about that illustration, Eileen, is that if she gave those patches to those children, yeah. their mothers yeah. may not sew. So it's a good idea to put that patch attached <clears throat> on the mm -hmm. back of patches that you're gifting to people yeah. so that they can just iron them on. Most yeah. people do still have an iron. Well, most. <laughs> yeah, right. And so Joanne also said that she likes to make an iron on patch to include in a greeting card as a special extra. Um, and she always includes fusing instructions for the recipient. That's awesome. very smart. That's very a wise woman there. Yeah, she well, she's a very wise woman. 
Um, let's see. Uh, Valerie Newby said that she loves the idea about the pre-cut. You don't have to worry about cutting any of the stitches. And Rain Wilcoxon, our good friend at Embroidery Garden, said, how do you make an, an iron-on patch just as you flip that slide to go into that? So yeah, yeah. you've answered her questions for sure. Yeah. So let's, shall we head over to the overhead so that we can take a look at how to use the print and stick target paper to yes, uh, let's do a pre-cut? Okay. So here's the, the array of the uh, collections of the poly patch twill. Here is the um, athletic and the brights, and then of course the uniform. And boy, does that make work look boring? Gee, that's a shame, right? <laughs> All those kind of dull colors, right? Okay, so I have, um, here are my patches, just the, so that you can see how they would look in the software, right? So that's the complete embroidery design. But we're going to print only the placement guide. And of course, in our in Perfect Embroidery Pro software, that's very easy to do. You just select that color, that element in the design and paste it into a new file. And then here we have our four placement guides for our four patches ganged up on one page. And I print that on print and stick target template paper. You get 24, 25 sheets. They're eight and a half by 11 in each package. And so then I would have this whole sheet printed and then I uh, remove the paper and then cut out the templates paper doll style so that I can then store them on the protective paper, but I don't have to worry about matching it up to that outside edge. So that's, that's how I use my print and stick target template paper. This stuff is a great product, but boy, is it um, tacky. You know, it's got an, it's repositionable, adhesive and translucent, which are great features. But when you are placing it on the twill, you don't want to um, cut it out right on the line and then have the twill start to fray as you peel it apart. So I have some tips for you. The very first thing that you're going to do is take your template and place it on a terry cloth towel and give it a good smoosh, right? And then lift it off and maybe do it one more time. Now you can see it's still tacky, it's still repositionable. So that's the perfect solution to remove that excess tackiness and then you're just gonna position it right on your twill. Well, actually, I lied. We're, what we're going to do first is add a tiny little piece of this protective paper to the um, one part of the template so that when we trim, we have an area to slice away and then separate the print and stick target template paper from the twill. And I have one started here. So I've already trimmed all around, but you can see I have this triangular piece of the protective paper that I slid inside. So that's sticking to my twill. And so then I'll just finish cutting this out right on that placement line. And I am cutting right into that placement line. And it's okay if I grab a little bit of that paper and pull it off. But now, see, I have like a little handle. And when I go to separate, it's perfect. It's not going to pull that twill and separate or fray the edges. And now I'm ready to, you know, stitch my placement guide on my water soluble stabilizer and position this in place, stitch my tack down and make my beautiful patch. So it is really super, super, super. I love it. Great technique that you've come up with, Deborah. What a little mess I made over there. Thanks for clearing that. <laughs> well, you know, my sewing room is kind of messy right now, but it's because I'm busy. I'm busy making patches. And yeah. I have to tell you, you know, it's interesting what makes us get that spark or what makes us feel like we're really having fun in the I sewing know. room. And for me, making patches just really lights my fire. I just got to say, it's one of those things that I get really into. And the more I do it, the more patches I think of that I could make. I believe it. Okay. So Rainwell Coxon asks, any tips on digitizing patches? 
Well, you know, Rain, what I would say is this, you know, I like to put uh, most of the stitch onto the patch. So, you know, that placement line and, the, and where the, the uh, satin stitch uh, uh, covers it, I like to uh, put more of the stitch onto the patch than off of the patch. Some people like 50-50. I like it a little uh, more on the patch than off. That's just my personal preference. Uh, but, you know, the reason people do that for applique, I think, is because we're actually trimming in the hoop. So we need yes. to allow for that little extra margin. But on a patch, I think you can put most of it right onto the uh, twill. Yeah. Yeah. And patches are meant to be freestanding. I mean, that's their main function, right? Where yes. applique is usually being stitched on a host fabric or base. Exactly. Fabric. And, and right. you know, it's interesting that, you know, you can use, you've probably got applique designs in your library that you could use to make patches. Mm -hmm. Certainly you just might need to make a, a little adjustment here or there, but it's pretty yeah. easy to figure out once you get started. Right. And then Becky Mums wants to know, well, Mums, yeah, what size font do you recommend for patches? Well, you know, this twill, if you're making them on poly patch twill, it has a very smooth base. And, yeah. you know, uh, and, when I... But it's stiff, you know, yeah, it's like firm. it should be. Yeah, it's like nice a, and firm. a great patch. Sorry, and, Deborah, I'm talking about and if And on my best dad in the universe, you can see... Uh, you know, this is pretty small pat, uh, lettering. So, um, you know, you could, I would say three eighths of an inch maybe would be a good guideline. Um, you know, you know, you could go a quarter inch if you're comfortable and you have the right fonts, but yeah. I think three eighths is a, is a good rule. And, you know, well, I'm going to, you know, plug our Perfect Embroidery Pro with its micro fonts, which are <laughs> what we call an embroidery miracle here. They are tiny little fonts, micro fonts, and you get 10 different ones. But, you know, most patches have a combination of fonts. Often they have very small text, and then they'll have maybe a bigger bold text element that, you know, you really want to jump out at the viewer. So, um the real secret is in this poly patch twill because it's so stiff. And Deborah, it already has backing on the back. So it's and not that, just freestanding fabric. This has right. been prepared yeah. specifically right. for patches. And it is a real professional patch material used by uh, people that make patches by the thousands. So we get to use that very same material in our own home studio. So that's why we know or feel really confident in this material. You know, Deborah Jones is our consumable product manager here at Diamond. So this is a consumable product, right? Because, you know, it's not like a, a monster hoop where you're going to buy one. This is something you're going to buy over and over again. And, you know, she went to the trouble of researching the source. What are large commercial embroidery houses using? Where are they getting it? And guess what? We're getting it at the same um, resource and then providing it to you in a put up, shall we say, that is more user friendly. They're nine by 24 inches and it's a rainbow of three different colorways, which is exactly you know what you're going to need. Are you going to need all three? Maybe, but at least you'll have a nice array of this fabric to make multiple patches. And, uh, you know, if you do the pre-cut, goodness, on a nine by 24, well, you can do the math, but imagine how many three inch patches you can get out of that, right? Exactly. You're going to get three yeah. across it's divided by 27 and a lot. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, and, you right. know, uh, you, you may not even know what you're going to use all those colors for when you when you get it. But after you start making patches, you know, you uh, like what when I was making that angel, that 99 percent angel, I thought I want to make that look like a cloud. I'm going to use that yeah. light blue. I never thought about using that. I didn't think about using it until I had the idea for that specific patch. So right. I'm a fan of having multiple colors. Mm -hmm. And then Valerie Newby wants to know what size needle do you use on this twill? Good question. Well, one of the great things about patches is that 
do by this method. We don't need any special equipment. And you can use your 7511 embroidery needle. You could use an 80 uh, as well. But really that 7511 is sufficient because this twill is firm. It's not heavy. Okay, so you don't need, and it's got a fine twill. It's not a coarse fill. So you are going to get good definition on your column stitches, on your lettering. Uh, you don't have to worry. And then Sheila Wagner wanted to know, do you put the target paper on the top or the back? That's a really good question. So some patches are not symmetrical, meaning when you print your placement guide, then um, your placement guide is meant to be used right side up, let's say. So you're definitely going to put that print and stick on the top of the fabric, not on the back. And remember, there's already backing on the twill, so you don't have to worry about stabilizing that. So I put my print and stick target paper on the top. Now, if for some reason you wanted to put the print and stick on the back, when you print, before, before you print your placement guide, mirror image it and then you can place it on the back but you know start out just putting it on the top yeah <laughs> right? i think that's i think that's the best and you know eileen if you have a wonky irregular geometric shape of some type you might even want to mark the top yeah you know well that one would be pretty easy yeah that no, would that's you know like when i yeah. did my cloud uh shape design let me oh, just show yeah. that like it could have been, I don't know what was the top or bottom, you know, I, right. I should uh, mark that yes. when I use that particular method, you know, so um, that's. And, yeah, and that's the benefit of printing out, you know, the full page, uh, you know, the full design so that you have a reference. You could always take that cloud patch, say Deborah, and, you know, position it over the full smart. patch. So that yeah, you know. very smart, very yeah. smart, yes. Now, Anne McCarthy, who uh, lives right here in Dallas, she says the patch twill cuts great on the, on the digital cutters. And, you know, truth be told, she's a dime educator. So she had the opportunity to test this product um, from us. She's already had it for a little while. And um, so she's, well, she's a wizard on the digital cutter. And so thanks. Yeah, I can't uh, wait to see some yeah. of Ames' uh, patches that she's made because she's very creative. But I agree. I have cut uh, some of these patches on the digital cutter. And, you know, I was a little intimidated to get the digital cutter back out, to be honest, Eileen, because I forgot, you know, yes. how to scan the material and, you know, get it in the right place. But, it, I, you know, once I started using it for it, I agree, it cuts clean and it, and it, you know, I didn't have any problem with, uh, you know, little fray pieces that didn't cut properly. Right. It cuts clean as a whistle. Awesome. And then Becky Munns wanted to know, since this fabric is already stiff, does it require any extra stabilizer in the hoop, in a monster hoop? So, I would say no. Yeah. So, of course, if you're using the pre-cut method, then you're going to hoop the heavy-duty water-soluble stabilizer, which we do have. And hopefully we can get an image of that up on the screen in a little bit. But we do have that in our on our website. And um, But if you are going to hoop the twill, then no, no stabilizer at all. I love that. It's all already been done for you. Yeah. So I think we're kind of caught up on all the questions. Joanne Banco loves the roll sizes and the selection of colors. She says that makes it really useful. And, uh, oh, this is a kind, kind comment from Ella Bly. She's new to machine embroidery. Well, welcome. And you are always welcome here, Ella. You're going to find a vast amount of information here every week. Um, and uh, you already have our hoop mat and love it. Well, good for you to use a hoop mat as a newbie because many of us spent 15, 17 years chasing that hoop around the, the sewing table, right? Trying to figure out how to keep it still while we hoop, uh, right? Okay, well, Tony Lally says he loves the small town charms. We do too, we do too. And Esther, my dear friend, Esther Hoplin, she wishes the shipping wouldn't be that expensive to Canada. I know, I feel like calling your prime minister and saying, can't you guys make this more doable? Because it's really not just us, let's see. 
Okay, so Stephanie Hardy says um, she's shopping and she only sees the Brights twill. Can I get the athletic assortment of colors? You sure can. So I'm hoping somebody on my team is listening and they'll jump over to the website and make sure all three um, color ways are um, options. You know, I wonder if you have to click on the, the little, you know, the down, the drop down thing. little menu, drop maybe, down, maybe. To select your colors. Yeah. Well, if I was really smart, I'd take everybody over there, but probably not today. Okay, so if you came for the Small Town Charm, I just want to remind you that on Saturday, this Saturday, May 29th, I know here in the U.S. it's Memorial Day weekend, but if you don't have anything to do, you can join our friends over at OML Embroidery. And uh, Sue Brown will do a free sew along doing the small town charm. So if you have friends that are interested in seeing the June small town charm, invite them now, share this link and tell them to come on over. We're just about to reveal. So if there's no more, if there aren't any other questions on patches, then we will move over to the small town charms. And I'm just kind of scrolling through to make sure we handled the needles. Beverly Blakely wants to do it for baseball caps. Stephanie Hardy says it would be great to do for jeans instead of embroidering directly on them. And, you know, I don't know how old you are, Stephanie, but, you know, earlier in my life, that was really popular. Jeans were, um, you know, decorated with patches and they were just awesome, right? It was a really popular thing to do. And actually, the uh, your uh, your uh, our uh, our friend Gary Gardner was quite involved with the patches, and and he um, back in the um, you know in the era of the pop festivals, that was really a big deal. Yeah, like yeah. this week, I guess it's the anniversary of um, oh uh, would um, <laughs> was the big concert in New York Wood Woodstock? Yeah. Woodstock, right? I was thinking Wood Street. You know, yeah. it, it must be the anniversary of that. And boy, there was a lot of patches there. I don't think they kept them on their body that long, but you know, when they walked into <laughs> the event, I think they were wearing them, right? Okay, that's enough of that nonsense. So let's go, let's show the small town charm. Okay, Deborah. Oh, you bet, let's do All it. Right. No, this is our special, this is our special. I didn't even show this. So each of these assortments are $27.99 plus free shipping to the continental US uh, contiguous line of you know, states. Aren't they fun? Oh my gosh, you're gonna have so much fun with this. Okay, as you know, in January, we uh, released the first small town charm and that was our quilt shop. You're going to find that it comes in two colors, I mean, two sizes, seven by 12 and five by seven. Um, some of them are multiple hoopings, almost all I think are multiple hoopings and that awning is 3D. In February, we did a sweet shop. And then we also, in March, did another shop, which was the dress shop. And I just heard um, in the comments that uh, all of the three colors are now available on the website. So if you were looking for other colors earlier, they're there now. So go ahead and pop over there. Okay, in April, oh, well, this was May. I must have missed one. This is May. This is our outdoor cafe. Wasn't that fun? We had a lot of fun with that. So it's two stories. And so that's actually three hoopings because the awning is separate. So the next one up is June. And that is our town hall. Now, my friend Sue Brown over at OML Embroidery, she calls her town Sueville. So I'm wondering if she's going to change that name. So we'll see what happens, right? So on the left is the five by seven and on the right is the seven by 12. Now you'll notice there's no awning this time, but there are two hoopings. So let's take a look at how we do it. You're gonna need some fabrics and remember you have, when you download the embroidery designs, you have instructions that come that you are in the download. So you're gonna find all the embroidery formats and these instructions you know, colorfully illustrated, you'll get a thread list, you'll get a fabric list. So everything you need is in that download. Okay, so in this illustration, I show you uh, different fabrics. And I'm, I also wanted to call out the different sections of that first hooping. Like we have the sidewalk, the center of the building and the town hall building and the roof. 
when you hoop your, for the five by seven, when you hoop a 12 inch square of fabric, you're going to place the bottom of that town hall about three inches from the edge of that fabric. And that will allow enough room for the clock tower on top. So first thing up is stitch a placement guide for the, um, uh, why isn't it um, advancing, for the sidewalk. And you'll play, cover that placement guide with sidewalk fabric. And then stitch the tack down, trim it away, st also stitch the outline. And, um, and then you'll have a placement guide for the brick detail of the town hall. And now remember this brick that you see the detail is stitching. So you don't have to hunt for brick fabric. All you need is a solid or almost solid fabric. And the details are in the embroidery design. Um, next up is the sashing of the windows and a placement guide for the center of the town hall where you'll add a contrasting fabric and you'll stitch the wood slat details and also the door. Now, of course, it looks like the door is hanging out you know, in midair, but it's not because we have stairs and a banister that are included. Now take a look at the town hall sign. Um, I didn't like it once it was stitched out because the wood slat is kind of running right through the lettering. So in the, in the instructions, I tell you to ignore that because in the actual embroidery design, I have included a complex fill behind, you know, that makes the sign. And, but the, these images here don't show you that, so my apologies. And then a placement guide for the roof, which you'll add. Now, again, don't worry about that open area in between. That will be covered by the clock tower. At this point, after the roof shingles are stitched and the outline of the roof in black, it's time to take it out of the hoop. And you will print, print a, a template of the clock tower itself and position it right there on the roof. Now get a really good look at it. Make, you know, make sure it's centered. Make sure the bottom of the clock tower roof is covering the center of the building, but not obstructing the words town hall. So take your time with that. Even peel back that template to make sure it's going to cover that opening on the roof below it. Next up, I like to use Perfect Alignment Laser to position um, my templates so to make sure that I'm really going to nail it. And here I have my 5x7 multi needle hoop in place, and I've aligned it on the hoop mat, aligning the zeros on the hoop with the center marks on the mat, and then I turn on my PAL, and that's those red lights. And then I slide my fabric in place, and I am aligning the uh, the crosshair on the template with the beams. Now remember, the hoop is right underneath, which has been centered under that laser. And then I just place my top frame on top of that hoop, and it is all in position. And when I take that to my machine, it's going to be dead center. All right, and there we are. We've already stitched, uh, of course, there would be a placement guide for the brick, and then a tack down and the detail and we would trim away the fabric and stitch the um, satin outline, the face of the clock, the dome at the top, and I have fixed that little issue at the top, and also the flag. And there you have it. Isn't that adorable? So that is the five by seven. That's the five by seven clock tower. Now the seven by 10 is a little different. It's wider and a little taller. And we've added some shrubs along the uh, right and left of the building to fill that space. Now the, the steps are gonna be all the same. You're gonna start with a bigger piece of fabric because uh, of course it's um, a larger design. And all those instructions and details are in the uh, in downloadable instructions. Again, it's going to be the sidewalk and the placement guide and the brick, and then also the sashing and the windows and the center of the building, which will give you um, the wood details. And uh, the landscaping is just a row of grass and then the shrubs, both right and left. And so Sybil Ditzler says, um, she loves the town hall. Thank you. I'm glad that you like it. I know it's kind of um, 
traditional looking, but I know well, you folks, when you get going and adding, like Joanne Banker says, it wouldn't it be fun to add some landscaping? That's a great idea. And Candy Bray, I love Candy Bray. She's been doing the small town charms and last year she did our doors. Um, and she's just wondering what extras should she add? Well, there's, you know, space on the steps. There's space in front of the building. You yeah, know, there's, I know y'all. Okay, so now you can see that complex fill in the sign and that's creating a nice uh, place for the lettering to sit. And of course, if you have our software, you can take out the word town hall and stitch, um, you know, mayor's office, like Sueville, uh, like, you know, mayor of Sueville or who knows what she's gonna do. I'm anxious to see next week. Okay. Uh, so let's get into how we're going to do the um, clock tower. Same thing, same technique you're going to use. Now print a template of it. It's very important. And now here, this is where I use PAL. Now I'm in my 8x12. You can use a 7x12 hoop. Notice how I have marks on my monster hoop, the bottom frame. And, you know, they're just top, bottom, right, and left. And uh, let's see, Mary, you have the nine by 14 monster hoop. Absolutely, just cut your fabric a little larger to make sure you fill that hoop, that's all. Um, and Sheila says, uh, what do you do with it after you stitch it? Well, Sheila, many people are saving these and they're going to make a quilt for the whole year. But if you are like me um, and you, you know, you can purchase this, um, quilt block stands separately, and then I turn them into uh, a way that they just sit on on this, and then it's a it's a home decor item that you know that you just decorate your house with, and you change them every month. So that's that's what's happening with these. Um, let's see, Joanne Banco likes a state flag. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. And Betty Coley is going to make it a, a courthouse. Good idea. You know, last June. Um, we did a church door and, you know, to kind of signify, you know, the wedding month of June. So many people get married in a courthouse. So maybe that's uh, what you, you know, you could do that for. Yeah. Super fun. Okay. Um, so here I am, you know, marking my hoop. Well, I've, I mean, my mark, my hoops are already marked. And then I place it under PAL and turn on the lamp. Um, and then the next step is to slide my fabric with the template attached underneath that beam. Now the hoop is underneath. I want you to understand that. So the hoop is underneath. And then I just take the top of my monster hoop and position it right in place. And now notice the vertical beam is not actually aligned with the vertical line on the clock tower. And because the center of the clock tower, the you know, the center of that design is actually just about at the uh, face, in the center of the clock face. But don't worry about that. I just want to make sure I'm square in the hoop so that I can move the design when I'm actually at the hoop. So uh, when I'm actually at the machine. So here you can see I have moved my needle so it is positioned dead center over that template. And to verify that I am... Oh, why is that there? That's the first color. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I added another um, slide, but that would be where I would uh, use my trace feature on my machine to travel to like the left end of the design or the right end of the design and confirm that that crosshair is going to stay in the center of my hoop. And that tells me that I am absolutely um, square in the hoop. So. And then, of course, remove the template. Don't forget, remove the template, because if you stitch on that template, pff, you're never getting that off, I can tell you. Okay, Sue Brown, she wants to put some birds in the sky and clouds. And um, and Joanne Banco loves your ideas. Joyce Leary says, how do you get the centering lines on your hoop? Well, stay tuned, Joyce, and I'll pull a hoop off the wall, and I'll show you how I did that, okay? How about we do that in a, after we finish this? Okay, so again, you're, oh, God, goodness. Here's my, here's my slide where it shows you that I used the trace feature on my machine, you know, and travel to the left part of the design. And I'm just confirming that the needle is going to be centered over that line. And that's just a great way to um, make sure you're square in the hoop. Okay, you're going to continue, you know, adding your fabric and then completing your design. 
And isn't that fun? This is the quilt block stand. Now, in the instructions that you'll download, it tells you that you can um, use the arch to trace that arch on your fabric. So if you want to make that curved top, all you do is lay this on the backing fabric and just trace that arch and then stitch about a quarter inch away from it and you'll be good to go. So pretty fun, huh? Let's see. Janice Holdridge, she wants to add, oh, uh, she wants to add hot air balloons. You can see them in the sky. Great idea. Great idea. I like that. That's a good summer idea for June. And um, yeah, so do you like it? Give us a thumbs up and these, these hearts that's so nice, red hearts. Blue hearts, really very lovely. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Marilyn says it's a, it looks like a great quilt to make. Okay. So Deborah, shall I show them how to um, add those marks? How about if I do that? You chat a minute while I go grab okay. a hoop. Okay. <coughs> okay. Well, you know, I hope that uh, ev everybody uh, enjoyed the patches. And I do want to say that the companion threads might not be up uh, available for purchase quite yet, but they will be soon. So if that's something that you wanted to add, probably not in the shopping area quite yet, but it's uh, it will be soon. So we definitely wanted to make sure you knew it's going to be available. Yeah. So Deborah, it's pretty easy to, um, you know, I, I, I teach you how to add them for the top, right? How to, how to add your rulers and find the center on the top and that's on my blog you, the you know, since instructions are there they're also in the package when you purchase the hoop when you open it up the instructions on how to add the rulers is included okay but on the bottom it's a little different so what i do is and i almost never do this but i attach the frame to the bottom but not completely to the bottom so what i've done is i have it offset so that this portion of the hoop is not on the metal frame. And then I just take a, a, a marker and um, I can use PAL if I want, but I don't have to, I could use a ruler. And then I just draw a permanent line with a Sharpie because that doesn't smear on this metal surface. And I mark it there. And then I do the same here. And then top and bottom are marked. And then I do the same for the right and left vertical. And you got to get your fingers out. There we go. And I just do the same. I would align that, you know, make that mark right there with this zero. And now I'm marked. So easy. Right, Deborah? That is oh. a very good tip, Eileen. And, you know, because a lot of times something that's seemingly simple like that we might not have thought that 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 just to use that top who as your reference yeah, that's a great right tip. the work is already done so it makes it super easy and sometimes it's really handy to have that bottom hoop marked you could put rulers on it you could purchase extra rulers but really it's not necessary you just really need the center yeah right right well, that was a lot of fun. I can't wait to see what our OML gang will do. And I sure hope you'll post your uh, image of your small town charm on social media. Remember, use <laughs> hashtag Dime so Along, and we'll go out there and we will search um, uh, Instagram and Facebook to find your small town charm. So we can't wait to see what you've done. Oh, and next week, I have a special guest. So maybe we could slip over to PowerPoint. Next week, I have Salima Jaffer from AAA Sewing in Lomita, California, who's going to join me. And we're going to talk all about Snap Hoop Monster and the Dream Panel. See the Dream Panel behind Salima, that beautiful flower, the quilt that's to her left? That's what we're going to talk about. She most certainly has... Um, digitized. Uh, I mean, she's finished that quilt. She used our monster hoops. So we'll be sharing some tips on that. And I'm going and to play. Salima with it's really a delightful uh, person and instructor. I know everybody will enjoy that. And that is a beautiful uh, class. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And Salima, gee, we've been friends for almost 10 years and she's got a, a great dealership, a baby lock brother dealer out in uh, California. And it's a family business. You know, 
which like most of our sewing machine retailers are, right? They're all, 95% of them are small family businesses. Right. And so right. our whole theme this year really is supporting small town businesses, the small town charms, you know, it's been a difficult year. So let's help those who have been important to us. All right, Absolutely. Deborah. Yeah, Judy Warren says, wow, Salima. Yeah, she knows Salima. Joanne Banco, so kind. She says, fantastic show. Happy stitching, everyone. Yeah, and Sherry, we love this too. So I look forward to seeing everyone here next week. Work on those small town jar charms. Enjoy your holiday weekend. And Deborah, thank you so much for sharing all your tips. Oh, it's my pleasure, Eileen. It's always great to be here. Thanks for having me. Okay. So long, everyone.